All right, so I want to go over selective precipitation from section 4.2, qualitative analysis. Um, we're gonna take a look at the practice problems. If you take a look at practice problem number one, it says describe a process to individually remove the ions, silver, barium, and beryllium. So I'm gonna start by writing them. From a solution, be sure to list the compounds that you add in order and the method of removing the precipitate. You may wish to use a flowchart. Now, there are other answers that are possible for these questions. I am simply going to give you a sample answer, okay? And I'm going to try and explain this because I know that this can be a little bit confusing. What I need you to view this is, is view it as some sort of a double replacement reaction where we did it with quick check, um, the first quick check where we were doing number one, and we were combining two different solutions. Those solutions contained ions that were freely moving, and two of those ions, a cation and an anion from the solutions came together, and they formed a precipitate, and we filtered out that precipitate so that we could remove one of the ions, that is selective precipitation. So here, if you take a look at the solubility rules, which you need to do while you're doing this, um, what I would recommend doing is look at which one of these ions could I remove by adding something else. For instance, if you take a look at um, the chlorides, which are a quarter of the way down in the solubility rules, they're soluble with most cations unless it's silver, okay? It doesn't list the other two, which makes it convenient, which means I can selectively pull out the silver ion if I add a solution that contains a chloride ion in it. Now, what I recommend you do is the alkali ions, which are listed at the top of the solubility rules, the lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. When they are with a chloride, they are soluble. So that would be a solution that you could add with the chloride ion freely moving so it could partner up with the silver and you could remove it, okay? So what I would do is I would to a solution that contains those three ions, I would go ahead and in step number one, I would add a sodium chloride solution to it because a sodium chloride solution will have freely moving sodium ions and freely moving chloride ions and when I do that what will happen is this chloride ion and this silver ion will combine and I will be able to pull out silver chloride, which has low solubility, so that's my precipitate. And you can just filter this out, okay? So that means now you've gotten rid of the silver ion. You just have to be careful with what you're adding to make sure that it's not going to also pull out another ion, because that wouldn't be selectively precipitating out one at a time. Then what you're going to do is we're left with barium and beryllium. So from here, what we want to do is let's go back and look at the solubility rules and let's see what barium or beryllium will precipitate out with. Look at the sulfates halfway down. A lot of the sulfate compounds are soluble in water, but it's insoluble with or low solubility with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, and lead. Well, I have barium here left, right? I got rid of the silver. So I could pull out this barium in step two. If I add, let's add an alkali metal sulfate because those are soluble. So pick one of the alkali metals. I'm just going to pick sodium. So if I add a sodium sulfate solution, you're going to have freely moving sodium ions and freely moving sulfate ions in that solution. These sulfate ions 
will combine with the barium ions. And then you'll have your barium sulfate of low solubility forming a precipitate, and then you can filter this out. Okay? So after that, then you'll be left with your beryllium. And then if you look back at the solubility rules for beryllium, it looks like hydroxides would have low solubility because beryllium is not soluble with a hydroxide. So what I would do is in step three, to pull the beryllium ion out of the solution, I would add an alkali metal hydroxide. So I would pick like a sodium hydroxide, and then I would end up with freely moving sodium ions and freely moving hydroxide ions because that's a strong base. So this hydroxide ion will combine with the beryllium ion in the solution. I will form a beryllium hydroxide precipitate and I can simply filter out that precipitate from the solution, okay? Now, if you decide that you wanna do something else, totally fine, if you can pull them out one at a time, okay? Let me do number two with you because number three has a QR code that you can scan with your phone. Number two has got a bromide ion, a sulfate ion, and a sulfide ion. So those were cations, these are anions, so this is a little bit different. So if we take a look back at the solubility rules, if you take a look at, let's see, all nitrates, you want to pull out, let's see, let's try and pull out this sulfate. So if I look, let's go halfway down. Sulfates have low solubility with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, or lead. So if I add one of those ions with all the nitrates are soluble, so what I would personally do is I would pick a nitrate containing compound because that's an anion. I need a cation that when the cation forms with this, it forms a precipitate. So I would go ahead and add a calcium nitrate, and that's because all nitrate compounds are soluble, and that's going to give me freely moving calcium ions and nitrate ions, okay? Because all nitrates are soluble in water. And this calcium ion will combine with this sulfate ion and form a precipitate. So then I can pull out the calcium sulfate and I'll just filter it out of the solution. Okay? Now I have left a bromide and a sulfide. Okay? So I need to turn back to the solubility rules. I'm going to again choose a nitrate containing compound because those are soluble in water. I just need to be concerned about the cation that's with the nitrate. Can it pull out one of these? So if you take a look, um, it looks like we've got under sulfides, about halfway down. If I combine, let's say you could pick anything except for the alkali ions or hydrogen or ammonium or beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, because they're all soluble. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a transition metal with a nitrate, and that will pull out my sulfide. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick out copper. So I'm going to go ahead and add a copper to nitrate solution because that's going to give me freely moving copper ions, freely moving nitrate ions, the copper ion will totally pull out my sulfide ion. Um, that has low solubility, so that's going to give me CUS. And I will just filter that out. And then I'll be left with my bromide ion. Okay. If I turn back and I look 
it looks like bromides have low solubility with silver. It's about a quarter of the way down the solubility table. Silver, lead to, and copper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a silver nitrate, because nitrates are soluble in water. That will give me a silver ion and a nitrate ion. And this silver ion will combine with this bromide ion and give me silver bromide due to its low solubility. And then I can just filter that out of the solution.